Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today is the lecture six of the dynamic programming playlist. And the problem that we will be solving is house robber. Yes. Now this problem is quite similar to the lecture five. So if you have not seen the lecture five, I'll recommend you to go back, watch lecture five and then come across and watch this because I won't be explaining uh, this problem in deep because this problem can be solved using the same technique that I have used in lecture five. I'll be using the same code. Just there is a slight moderation in the problem. So let's read the problem. What does the problem state? So Mr. X is a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has a certain amount of money hidden. All houses along the street are arranged in a circle. Okay, that means the first house is the neighbor of the last one. Make sense? Meanwhile, adjacent houses have a security system connected. That means the houses that are uh, adjacent have a security system connected and it will automatically uh, contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. So you're given an array, a list of non-negative, very important, non-negative integers array representing the amount of money at each house. Your task is to return the maximum amount of money Mr. X can rob tonight without alerting the police. So basically it states that uh, you have to pick up, you have to steal from houses without alerting the police. And how does the police, uh, how does the police get alerted if two adjacent houses like if you steal from two adjacent houses. Now the previous question was uh, quite same. You're, you're supposed to return the maximum sum of the subsequence with a constraint that no elements are adjacent in the given array. The only difference in this problem is they're saying that the last house is the adjacent of the first one. So it's a circular kind of thing that they have given to you. So yeah, you need to uh, solve this off. So how will you solve this is a very, very uh, good question. Now let's take the first example. 2, 3, 2. Ideally, according to lecture 5, yes, ideally according to lecture 5, you could have picked this 2 and this 2 because they are not adjacent, correct? Since they are not adjacent, you would have picked up and you would have got 4. But in lecture 6, in this problem, this first and last guy are adjacent. So you cannot pick them. So apparently you will, you're only allowed to pick this. So the maximum that you can do is three. So just a shuttle change is the question. Like the lecture five had uh, stated clearly that you will have adjacent, but over here it states that you cannot have adjacent. Sorry, you will not have adjacents. You cannot have adjacents and the first and last are adjacents. That's the change in this question. So how can you solve this question? Now, uh, you might think of a lot of logic, but do you actually need to think of a logic? That's the question. Do you actually need any new logic? Or do you need new logic? And the answer to that is, I don't think I need a new logic. I can uh, solve using the previous logic uh, in the lecture five, but how, how can I do that? Can I say, can I say, I am definitely sure that whatever my answer will be, it cannot contain both of the first and the last. Whatever my answer is, cannot contain the first one and the last one. This is practically impossible because according to the question, first and the last one are adjacent. So you cannot contain them. Make sense? Now can I say my answer will either contain like it might, it might or it might not. This thing is for sure, first and last will not be together. So can I say, can I say, if I say, what if I consider the array from, like I leave out the last element, uh, whatever is the array, I leave out the last element. Let's leave out the last element and consider the remaining portion of the array. And, and then apply the lecture five logic in saying, find the maximum sum of the subsequence with adjacent. Remember, I'm leaving out the last possible element. So I've left out the last possible element. Okay, makes sense. But you might say, but Trevor, what if the last possible element was in the answer? So what I can do is, okay, this is a possible stuff that I can do. I can leave out the last element and I can apply the same logic 
on the remaining array or i can say let's leave out the first element yes let's leave out the first element and apply the same logic on the remaining portion of the array yes the lecture 5 logic make sense now i definitely know that first and last cannot be together so either this array will give you the answer or this array will give you the answer because that's what it tells if you just think slowly so can i say if this is giving me answer one and if this is giving me answer two like leaving out the last and leaving out the first can i say my answer to this question is max of both the answers it's very intuitive like it's very very intuitive because first and last cannot be together thereby i do one thing i remove the last and i apply the same logic of the previous question because the question was more or less similar i just was confused with the first and last so i just remove that and now the question becomes very straightforward as the previous question so it's time that uh, we will try to code this up so in the code just make sure uh, that there is long long int because 10 to the power cube 10 to the power 9 i think long long int is not required long long or long would have done but that's okay so what i'll do is i'll just copy paste this one let's copy paste this one so i've taken the uh, taken from the previous lecture 5 so this is nothing but the lecture 5 uh, space optimization solution okay so remember this, this is nothing but lecture 5 space optimization solution. Okay, the last one. So we know it will take a nums array and it will give me the maximum sum. So over here, I know one thing for sure. I will be computing the answer for the first half. Uh, if I don't take the last one, last element and I'll be computing for the rest half if I do not take the first element. So assume I create a couple of temporary arrays okay makes sense and what i'll do is in uh, these temporary arrays if i is not equal to zero i know uh, let's assume the temporary uh, array is this one like temporary one contains everything apart from the first element so i can just uh, keep it like this value in house of i okay makes sense if i is not equal to last index by the way just make sure you declare n as this value in house dot size okay just make sure you do that so if this is not equal to can i say temporary to dot push back value in house i so what i did was apart from everything apart from the last element i pushed everything into the temp2 Apart from the first element, I pushed everything into the temp1. That is what I've done. So I have the temp1 ready. I have the temp2 ready. So temp1 is containing. Now what I know is, okay, I know the answer is max of, if I just call the same function, okay, let's call the same function with temp1, let's call the same function with temp2. Okay, makes sense. Well, does this work for all of these? What if the array has only single element? So that's the case that I have to consider. Just in case uh, the array has single elements, probably you can keep it over here. If the array has single elements, then you can just pick the that element itself because it cannot have any adjacents. Just pick it. Now, if I try to run this code, you see it is running. Now let's quickly submit it and check. Yeah, runs absolutely fine. So you can see, uh, by the way, uh, submission time. <laughs> so if you're watching this video, just make sure you like it because I do make these videos late night. Uh, because I have my office hours in the day. So yeah, please make sure you like it. So yeah, uh, 253, uh, it, it works absolutely fine. Now this is how we can easily do it. Uh, it. It is just a variation of the previous problem. So always uh, keep your eyes open. Whatever logic I'm teaching, try to keep it and try to implicate them by slightly changing the logic. Don't change it wholeheartedly, okay? So guys, this will be it for this video. If you have watched the video till now, please make sure you like it. Uh, let's follow our tradition. Please, please do comment understood or US in the comment section if you have understood this problem. And you can solve this problem on lead code. It goes by the name House Robert 2. Okay. So with this, let's wrap up this video. Bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.